Welcome to Egg Heads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Egg Heads. Hoping to beat the might of our Egg Heads today are out on a limb from East Anglia. Now, this team are all members and associates of Steel Bones, a charity for civilian amputees. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Emma and I'm a charity founder. Hi, I'm Monica. I'm a retired secondary school teacher. Hi, I'm Manjula and I'm a civil servant. Hi, I'm Colin and I'm a former car valetor. Hi, I'm Mark and I'm a fitness instructor. So, Emma and team, hello. 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 Great to see you all. Emma, tell us about uh, Steel Bones, the charity. Steel Bones is a very new voluntary charity. We started it three years ago, purely out of the fact that there was no support for amputee families. My husband is an amputee and we had two very young children who we needed to realise that amputation was not a scary thing. And so we use Steel Bones to meet some wonderful, wonderful people. And we help amputee families overcome the trauma of amputation. And it, it can be war-related, so that's how we're used to hearing about it, but of course often in through illness or some other reason, can't it? Absolutely. Accidents, all sorts of things. Motorbikes, work accidents, there's a, a illnesses. There are a variety of ways that amputation comes about. I suppose the key question for me is whether you quiz together. We don't and we haven't quizzed together. This is our first time quizzing together. But... But we love doing quizzes. We all have a passion for it and we have a passion for knowledge. So we are really, really excited to be the inaugural launch of the Steel Bones quiz team. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Good luck, challengers. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. If they fail to win the prize money, it rolls over to the next show. Now, quite a few challenging teams have failed to win out on a limb. In fact, the last 11 games have been won by this lot over here. So you've got to stop them. And if you do, you'll get 12,000 pounds. Shall we begin? Yes. OK. The first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of geography. So one of you, please, from out on a limb versus Beth, Chris, Pat, Kevin, or Lisa from the Eggheads? Uh, who shall we get to tackle geography? Not me. Manjula? OK, yeah. Well done, right. Manjula. Yeah. OK, Manjula, against which Egghead? So you've got the choice of all five. Lucky you. Yeah. Manjula matching with Whatever Beth. What do you think? Beth. Go with you. Yeah. yeah, let's go for Beth. Yeah. Very yeah. good. You've had your moments on geography? I have. But Beth now remembers places one. by where her relatives live. Yep. It's a new thing. <laughs> so Manjula from Alt on a Limb versus Beth from the Egghead starting us off. Please go to the question room now. May I ask about, about your amputation and, and how it came about? Yeah, well, I was born with some um, medical issues and then when they tried to sort of fix those, it didn't go quite right. And I decided to have an amputation when I was 12 and that was about 34 years ago now. And I gather at some point, John Barnes, the England player, signed your leg, your prosthetic leg. He, he did. I was going to see a match and the match was waterlogged. And I was about to go home and John Barnes was right behind me and I just didn't want to miss that opportunity. Good luck in this round, Manjula. And would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. Here's your question. Which metropolitan borough stands on the south bank of the Tyne opposite Newcastle upon Tyne? Gateshead, Salford or Bradford? I don't think it's Salford because that's Manchester. Bradford is in Yorkshire, isn't it, I think? So I think it's, I think it's Gateshead. Absolutely, just across the river. Gateshead is right, well done. First point to you. OK, your question, Beth. Lake Garda is the largest lake in which country? Greece, Italy or France? Uh, no relations in any of these places. Um, but my parents have visited Lake Garda in Italy. Italy is correct. Back to you, Manjula. Which of these resorts is located in the county of Essex? Margate, Southend-on-Sea or Great Yarmouth? I used to go to Great Yarmouth when I was young on the summer holidays, so it's not... <laughs> that's not in Essex. Um, it's, it's not in Margate. It's in Kent, I'm sure. I'm sure it's Southend-on-Sea. South End on Sea is right. Well done. Well done. South End on Sea. Beth, your question. Which of these US states is the smallest by area? Hawaii, Rhode Island, or Florida? Uh, well, I think it's the, the, not even of these, it's the smallest state completely. It's Rhode Island. 
It is Rhode Island. Well done. Those, those New England states, as they're called, isn't it? What are the other ones there, kids? Do we remember? Well, there's Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island and Connecticut. Six of them. Six of them. Right, thank you. OK, your third question, Manjula. Here we go. The Gulf of St. Lawrence is located off the east coast of which country? Canada, Mexico or Australia? Oh, that one is the toughest one so far. <laughs> so I don't think it's Mexico. I don't think it's Australia. I think it's Canada. You've got three out of three. Well done, Manjula. It's Canada. So, Beth, your question to stay in. Dowlagiri is a massif in which mountain range? Dowlagiri. Alps, Himalayas or Andes? Dowlagiri. I'm not sure whether a spelling would help. Um, based on language clues, I can only put it in the Himalayas. And you're right. Himalayas it is. Yeah, <laughs> everyone on this side, this little murmur of anticipation. Sorry, you couldn't throw her off. And we go to sudden death. OK, so it gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternatives. The Volta River system runs for approximately 1,000 miles through which continent? Volta, V-O-L-T-A. Mm, I think I'm going to say Asia. It's Africa. I'm sorry, but you're not out yet. Beth, if you get this right, you're in the final round. Quito is the capital of which South American country? Q-U-I-T-O. Uh, Quito is the capital of Ecuador. Ecuador is right, Beth. On sudden death, you've taken it. You're in the final. Well done. Sorry, Manjula. Come back to us. Early days. Lots of time for your team to recover. Out on a limb have lost a brain from the final round. The kids have lost nothing so far. Let us see. The next subject is film and TV. So who would like this? Can't be Manjula, obviously. Is that Colin? Colin. Not me, yeah. 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 Colin, Colin, you're up. Colin. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, Colin. Um, Against which A kids? So anyone but Beth. I'm not sure, but I, I think Pat is more classical rather than trendy. So I think maybe try Pat. Right. I'll, <laughs> I'll pick Pat. I think that's a good shout. More classical rather than trendy. Colin from Out on a Limb, taking on Pat from the Air Kids. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your position. What sorts of film and TV do you like then, Colin? Um, late comedies, uh, Only Falls and Horses and Porridge, uh, or anything like that, I'm into. OK, well, good luck on this. Thank you. So film and TV against the great Pat. And would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go second. OK, Pat, your question. What type of animal was Rin Tin Tin, the star of over 20 films in the 1920s? Chimpanzee, dog or horse? Well, he uh, was famously, supposedly found in a World War I trench. He was an Alsatian, so I'll go for dog. Dog is correct. 20 films. That's amazing. Rin Tin Tin. OK, Colin. Who plays the role of the devil in the 1987 film The Witches of Eastwick? Robert De Niro, Jack Nicholson or Al Pacino? It's going to have to be a guess. Uh, Jack Nicholson? Is the right answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Nicholson is right. Pat, which of these men played the role of the doctor in Doctor Who first? Peter Davison? Christopher Eccleston or Sylvester McCoy? I can dismiss Christopher Eccleston. He's much the more recent of those, that trio. So Peter Davison versus Sylvester McCoy. Would it have been Tom Baker, Peter Davison, Sylvester McCoy? Not sure of this one. I think I'll have to go for Sylvester McCoy. Eggheads? Peter Davison. Peter Davison. Ah, oh, you went the wrong way. That's very unusual. This is good for you. Now, Colin, get this one right, you'll pull ahead. What was the name of the waitress played by Connie Booth in the TV sitcom Fawlty Towers? Ursula, Polly or Sybil? Polly. Yeah, I knew you'd get that right. I bet you've seen them a number of times. Yeah, quite a few, yeah. And me too. <laughs> Polly is right. So you're ahead. Pat, if you get this wrong, you're out. In 2018, who became the first person to be nominated for a Best Original Song Oscar, as well as an acting Oscar for the same film? Was it Mary J. Blige, Jennifer Hudson, or Queen Latifah? I don't think it's Jennifer Hudson. I think the film might have been Mudbound. 
So who was in Mudbound? Was it Mary J. Blige or Queen Latifah? I can kind of persuade myself either way. Mary J. Blige or Queen Latifah? I think I'll have to go for Mary J. Blige. Beth? Yes, he's correct. Yes, yep. you're right. Is that the right movie right, as well? Yeah, yeah, it's not a comfortable watch. Mudbound. Mudbound. Yeah. Mary J. Blige is right. So, he's mounting a rear guard defence here. Colin, but if you get this right, you're in the final round. Who played the role of Peggy Olsen in the TV drama series Mad Men? Christina Hendricks, January Jones or Elizabeth Moss? I think it's Ele Elizabeth Moss. Challengers, do you know? You're very good, Colin. Yeah. You got three out of three. It is Elizabeth Moss. Well done. You're in the final round. Nice work for our challengers. You've leveled it up. And remember, we're playing for £12,000. Come back to us. We'll play round three. So as it stands, out on a limb, have lost one brain from the final round. The Eggers have lost one as well. Good work, Colin. And the next subject for you in our third round is politics. Right, who would like this? I'll have to do it. Yeah. Monica? Yeah, well, if Manjula was going to do it, so I'm the sort of backup for OK. That. <laughs> Which yeah. eggheads? Yeah. You can have Chris or Kevin Chris or Lisa. Possibly Chris. Chris? Yeah. Chris, I'd like to give you a go. Okay. OK, give Chris a go. So, Monica, from Out on a Limb, will play Chris from the eggheads in round three. And to ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. Monica, you have been in the past brain of Enfield. Yes, that's right. 1986. Now, now, Chris, I thought you had an Enfield connection. Ah, yeah. I was brain of Enfield 1982. Wow. Yeah. Really? So you, yeah. you two were out and about in Enfield being brains? Uh -huh. Yeah. OK, so we're politics, Monica. Do you want to go first or second against Chris? I'll go first, please. Here we go. In 2017, who became the vice president of the United States? Was it Mike Pence? Tim Kaine or Joe Biden? Uh, that was Mike Pence. It was Mike Pence, right. Chris, your question. What job was held by Emmanuel Macron before he entered politics? TV presenter, investment banker or policeman? He was an investment banker, Jeremy. He was indeed an investment banker. Back to you, Monica. The former Labour leader Michael Foote was often referred to by the name of which character from children's literature? Now, was this the cat in the hat, Peter Pan or Wurzel Gummidge? It was Wurzel Gummidge because of his fairly unkempt appearance. Indeed, Wurzel Gummidge, rather unkind nickname. Chris, which of these was a title used by the Spanish dictator, General Franco? Is it El Caldillo, Il Duce or El Caballo? Hmm, well, Il Duce, of course, was Mussolini, but Franco called himself El Caldillo. Mm -hmm. El Caudillo is correct. Well done. Level here. This is a real clash of Enfields, isn't it? <laughs> Back we go to you, Monica. Which man, a holder of three of the four great offices of state in the UK, was passed over for the Conservative leadership in 1957? Henry Brook, William Whitelaw or Rab Butler? I don't know. Uh, 57 means William Whitelaw was later than that. Henry Brook I don't recognise, but I've always heard that Rab Butler was mentioned as being... Um, he, he was actually responsible for the Education Act in 44. I'm going to risk Butler. Rab Butler's quite right. Very good. So, three out of three. Made short work of that, Monica. And, Chris, your question to stay in. In March 2018, Rex Tillerson was removed from which position in Donald Trump's administration? Secretary of State, Chief of Staff or White House Press Secretary? He was White House Press Secretary. No, he was not. He was Secretary of State. Please. It was an even bigger story than that. You've been knocked out, Chris. <laughs> Snatched at it somewhat. There we go. Standards are slipping in Enfield, aren't they, Monica? Well done to you. You're through to the final, and things are turning in favour of the challengers in quite a dramatic way here. Come back to us. We have one more round to play before the final. Right, as it stands, out on a limb have lost one brain from the final round. The eggheads have lost two, and we are playing for £12,000. The next subject is music. So it's going to be Emma or Mark on music. Yeah. Right, Emma. It's going to be me. OK, Emma, team captain goes in. Against which egghead? And you can have either of the two on the right, Kevin and Lisa. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Lisa is very good on music. Go for Kevin. Yeah, I'll go for Kevin. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. OK, very decisive. Emma from Out on a Limb versus Kevin from the Eggheads. My goodness, this is looking very lively now. Please take your positions for the last time. Well, I'm sorry your, your husband isn't here today, Emma, but he's the reason you set the charity up. Well, unfortunately, he was born with club feet and he went in for an operation that went quite horribly wrong about 10 years ago. It's out of that sort of trauma, but also that experience and frustration that we, we began Steel Bones, really. All right, Emma, so music is the subject. We're rooting for you here. Do you want to go first or second against Kevin? I think I'll go first. Here we go. George Harrison typically played which instrument in the Beatles? Drums, keyboards or guitar? I know. It's got to be the guitar. It's got to be the guitar, you're right. Ringo Starr on the drums. Kevin, Lionel Bart wrote the music and lyrics to which of these stage musicals? Oliver, The Sound of Music or Evita? Uh, well, Sound of Music was Rogers and Hammerstein and Evita was uh, Lloyd Webber and Rice, so it's um, Oliver. Oliver's right. And back we go to you, Emma. The singer Keith Urban, who married Nicole Kidman in 2006, is best known for his work in which genre of music? Is it folk, hip hop or country? Gosh, for some reason I expect to see rock up there. Um, so I'm going to go with country. Yes, you're right, country. Country's right, Kevin, back to you. There's No Other Way was the debut UK Top 40 hit for which band in 1991? Oasis, Blur or Pulp? No, I, don't, I, I, do, I just don't think I've heard of it, so... Um... Uh, no, it could be any of them. I, I'm going to say Pulp. Hey, kids, what's happened here? He's gone wrong. He's gone wrong. He's gone wrong. He missed Britpop. He did. He suddenly realised. It's hard, because Pulp, you think of being the ones with the most longevity there, really. They were going a little bit before the others, but this one's Blur. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's Blur. Yeah, no, I, I just... Right. Don't All right. Know. This is now quite exciting. So, we're playing for £12,000, and you just got to get this one right, Emma, and you will have knocked out the great Kevin. Here's your question. Paradise was a UK top 40 single for which singer in 2018? Paolo Nettini, George Ezra, or Robbie Williams? I uh, have been a bit amiss with my latest music. I've been tuning into my old favourites lately. For some reason, my gut is telling me George Ezra. Let's see, challenges, is she right? I don't think so. You don't think so? What do you think, Mark? I was going to say Robbie Williams. You're going to say Robbie Williams. It's good that Emma took this round because you're absolutely right. It's George Ezra. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, three out of three and well done. And Kevin's out. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This is getting exciting now. We're going to play the final next for £12,000. So, this is what we have been playing towards. It's time for our final round, and as always, it's general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So that is Manjula from Out on a Limb, but it's also Chris, Pat and Kevin from the Eggheads. Would you please now leave the studio? Emma, Monica, Colin, Mark, you are playing to win Out on a Limb £12,000. Beth and Lisa... What are you doing? <laughs> you tell us. Yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> in a desperate rearguard action here desperate. to keep, keep the eggheads on this winning streak, which has been very impressive so far. Now, as usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, they're all general knowledge, and you can confer, team. So, out on a limb, the question is, are your four brains able to finish off these two over here? Mark, does your team want to go first or second? Yeah. T okay. Take the initiative. Go for it. I've been told. We'll go first. Here we go, good luck. The Welsh delicacy of lava bread is traditionally made with which key ingredient? Is it carrots, mushrooms or seaweed? I'm uh, not sure on this. Yeah, I know, it's seaweed. 100% sure? Yep. OK, it's seaweed. 
You're certain, Monica, aren't you? Yes. I can tell. <laughs> you're, you're a good quizzer. <laughs> Seaweed is right. OK, eggheads. Which of these is a nickname of Charles II of England, Scotland and Ireland? The Sailor King, the Merry Monarch or Rufus? He was the king who liked to party. He was. Yeah? He was. Yeah. Which I think makes him not the Sailor King. No, that's William IV. And not Rufus, because that's my son. Yes, so, so yeah. Well, should we go with the Merry Monarch? Yes. That makes sense to me. That's the Merry Monarch, Jeremy. It is the Merry Monarch. One each. Back to you, challengers. In the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, what is the name of the fish that you are supposed to put in your ear to translate any language? Jericho fish, Gamora fish, or Babel fish? The Babel fish. Again, you sure? One hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um... Babel fish. Babel fish is right. Right. Well done. Well done. What is the literal meaning of the word gorilla? And that's G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A. -L -L Little war, jungle fighter, or rebellion? Mm, gorilla. I think it must be little war, because like guerra. No, guerra. It's, it's like guerra Guer. in French. Guerra Guerra, guerilla. Yeah. I would have thought would be little war. Yeah, you have guerilla fighters, so you wouldn't have jungle fighter fighters. It would be strange, wouldn't it? Yeah. They tend, to, they tend to be sort of localised bands, don't they? So it would make sense for them to be in... Little, little wars, yeah. A little war fight. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So we can yeah. justify that linguistically. Yeah. And we can justify that militarily. Yeah. OK. So we think that's little war, Jeremy. The logic is good. You're correct. Little war. Challenges. Give him the money, Barney, was a catchphrase of which entertainer, the host of the radio quiz show, have a go. Ted Rogers, Max Wall, or Wilfred Pickles? So the radio quiz show. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean Ted Rogers was three two one, he was later. Yes. It was a radio light. Uh, no, it's lighter. Now Max Wall was very much a, a, a comedian. I don't know whether he has any shows. Wilfred Pickles is the one I'm thinking about. Well that's my my gut's going with that one. Um I don't, I don't... No. Okay, what so do you think, Colin? I would go for Wilfred, Wilfred Pickles, Pickles, but what do you yeah. think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Are we happy on that? Yeah, we're happy. Yeah. We're happy. Sure? Yep. yep. OK. Jeremy, we're going to say Wilfred Pickles. Wilfred Pickles is correct. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> OK, all right. Three, two. Let's just, let's just take stock here. £12,000 we're playing for. If the eggheads get this wrong, the money is yours. You may not have to do anything more. The singer, Katie Tunstall who had a worldwide hit with Suddenly I See in 2005, was born in which part of the UK? Northern Ireland, Scotland or Wales? Scottish. She's a Scot, isn't she? I'm sure she's Scottish. Yeah, we'll go with yeah. that then, yeah. shall we? Yeah. Pretty, yeah, pretty sure. You think she's from Scotland? Scotland is right. 3-3. Three, three. We go to sudden death. £12,000 we're playing for. I don't give you alternative options now. Which instrument for inflicting capital punishment was originally named the Louisette after its inventor, Antoine Louis? That's got to be the guillotine. It gives it, it's it's French. Italian or French? It's French. It's French. And what are, what are other ways? It was only well, the guillotine. Capital punishment. It, yeah, was, only yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it was just the guillotine. 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 You all happy? Yeah. yeah. Let's go, go for the it. Please. Guillotine is right. OK, kids, here we are again. Get this wrong, and it's over. What name, also used for a type of skin marking, is given to a bugle or drum signal that recalls soldiers to their quarters? Tattoo? You have military tattoos. In the military tattoo. Freckle? Mole? Well, this is it. I'm now... I'm, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm ignoring the military implications and just running through all the skin markings <laughs> I can think of. Uh... But I can't come up with anything about that, I don't think. Um, unless it's like a French word, like a... Tattoo? So... <laughs> <laughs> not one, helping. One day we're going to do something about your language. Ha yes. Hashtag not helping. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know, and, unless it's, you know... I, I, do you think if we sit here any longer, we're going to come up with anything better than tattoo? No. Because my brain says no. No, my brain says no. Should we not. just go with it? Yeah. And, and frankly, you know... Full on swords if necessary. Probably, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. After a think, we're going to go with tattoo. Tattoo is right. <laughs> Sudden death. Here's your question. In the Thousand and One Nights, the slave girl Morgiana 
belongs to which man before she wins her freedom? No idea. Not a clue. Not a clue. Not an idea. I mean, what is Any it? Any ideas? Is it, it's a book, is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thousand and One Nights, yeah. the slave girl belongs to which man? Who? Which man? In other words, I think he's Let's some think kind of is. sultan, but what's name, what is actual... If we are supposed to identify the name of the sultan, I've not... I'm stuck. I, I, I would simply say the sultan. OK, so that's one option. Because so <sighs> the only person I can think of apart from that is Alibaba, but it won't be Alibaba. So, I mean... <laughs> well, Morgiana, does that no, 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 mean no, anything? No. no. Like, perhaps it is just a role. Well, I don't you know. know. I think we say the Sultan and hope, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. All right. I think that's our yeah, best option. Are there any particular Sultan any... names? I, well, no, I don't no, know no, any. I, I, I can't think of anything. I'm okay. so sorry. Well, no, don't worry. I don't know, you know, I don't no, know no, any I'm either. I'm up against a brick wall on this one. No. Well, it, it's going to be a, 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 a real guess, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> if you can tell. Um, the Sultan. The Sultan is your answer. Because you said it, you know. Oh. oh. She discovers the 40 thieves oh, hiding no, in large Alibaba. jars in oh, Ali Baba's courtyard and pours oh, hot oil gosh. over them, killing them, and Ali Baba rewards her by granting oh, her freedom dear. and she marries Ali Baba's son. Ah! Oh. No. Not to worry. Rats. The answer is Ali Baba. Oh, no. oh spit. Hey, kids, hey, kids. Here's your question. This will end the contest if you get it right. Which character from the Eagle comic was known as the pilot of the future? Down there was my first thought. And Didn't... mine. I don't know, never read the Eagle? No. Completely out of my frame of reference. Pretty sure Dan Der is the Eagle. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he was a pilot. pilot. That's about it. That's it. Yeah, that's all I've got. That's all we're going to say then, yep. isn't it? Yep. OK. Let's, let's try. Yeah. yeah. Dan Dare. The correct answer is Dan Dare. We say congratulations, Eggheads. You have won. Oh, I'm so, 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 so. No so worry. You are such good quizzers. You particularly, Monica. Yeah, you are. And so close. You I got know. Us if you had got Ali Baba, they would have still got Dan Dare. You'd yes. still be playing. So let's. It wasn't like you lost the money on that no, question. Absolutely. So let's bank on that. Yeah. But listen, it's so great to meet you and to hear about the brilliant charity. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So the eggheads have done what comes naturally to them. I think it's fair to say you played well, eggheads. The winning streak, which is really impressive, continues. And it does mean our challenges don't go home with the £12,000. So the money rolls over to the next show. Eggheads, can you be beaten? Well, took a lot of damage today, didn't you? Mm. Join us next time to see if a new team of challenges can be as, as brilliant as this team here. And there will be £13,000 to play for. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>